Hi, I'm Dr. Caitlin Neary from Boise, Idaho, and I will be discussing a case presentation highlighting the Arthrex mesh plate for an avicular fracture. The patient was a 26-year-old male who presented to clinic after sustaining a left foot injury while riding his dirt bike. He was complaining of pain over the dorsal aspect of his midfoot, but otherwise did not sustain any other injuries. He had no significant past medical history and was otherwise a very healthy 26-year-old male. On exam, he had swelling and ecchymosis over the dorsal aspect of his midfoot, as well as tenderness to palpation directly over his navicular. He otherwise had no open wounds and his skin was intact. He was grossly neurovascularly intact distally. Here are his injury films, which reveal evidence of a comminuted navicular fracture. He appears to have collapsed through the talonavicular and naviculocuneiform joints, but otherwise his medial longitudinal arch remains fairly well maintained. A CT scan was obtained to further evaluate the extent of the fracture pattern. The CT scan confirmed the presence of essentially a three-part navicular fracture with a central die punch fragment. There was also dorsal displacement of the medial fragment. The sagittal images from the CT scan confirmed not only the presence of the three-part navicular fracture, but also presence of a significant amount of plantar comminution. Due to the inherent unstable nature of his fracture pattern, and in order to restore alignment and stability of the navicular, the patient elected to proceed with surgery. I approached his navicular through a dorsal incision in which the navicular was able to be fully exposed. The Arthrex small joint distractor was used with a pin in the medial cuneiform and the tailor neck in order to distract through both the tailor navicular and navicular cuneiform joints. This allowed increased exposure and ease with reduction of the navicular fracture. I was able to reduce the navicular fracture into what I considered anatomic alignment, and this was held in place with multiple K-wires. When considering fixation options for his fracture, I felt that screws would be unlikely to provide the required stability for his fracture and would also be unable to hold his joint surfaces reduced. Further, I felt that there would be a high risk of collapse through the plantar comminution. When considering plating options, I knew that I needed a plate that would adequately span all three fracture fragments. I also needed a plate that would allow for buttress type fixation of both the talonavicular and the naviculocuneiform joints. I needed multiple options for fixation due to the multiple fragments and the geometry of his navicular. I also knew that I needed a plate that would anatomically fit the contour of the navicular in order to overall increase the strength of the construct as well as to avoid irritation of the surrounding soft tissues. In order to fulfill all these plating requirements, I felt that the mesh plate was the best option for fixation. The nice part about the mesh plate is that this can be fashioned and cut and shaped into size required for its intended use. The plate comes in long and short lengths and also comes in both titanium and stainless steel. Here are his intraoperative images showing final reduction and fixation of his navicular. The overall geometry of the navicular has been well restored and his talonavicular and cuneiform joints are well aligned. The length of his medial and middle columns has been restored as well. In terms of postoperative protocol, I kept the patient non-weight bearing in a splint for the first two weeks. From weeks two to six, he was kept non-weight bearing in a boot but was allowed to remove the boot for showering and light ankle range of motion only. From week six to week 10, I allowed him to start to advance his weight bearing in the boot. And from weeks 10 to 12, he was allowed to wean out of the boot into a regular shoe. At 12 weeks post-op, he was able to wean out of the boot. And at that point in time, I saw him for his final follow-up. Here are the patient's weight bearing radiographs when he was approximately three months out from surgery. His fracture appears to be well healed and overall his midfoot alignment is well maintained. He was very happy with the outcome of his surgery and had returned to full activity with minimal pain and was doing well. In conclusion, I have found the mesh plate to have multiple indications where it can be very helpful. This includes hindfoot, midfoot, and forefoot fractures in which the fracture morphology does not match previously contoured anatomic plates. I have also found it helpful with midfoot fusions, particularly Charcot and other types of deformity, where once again, pre-contoured plates does not match the shape of the bone. Thank you.